Okay, we're about to start. Yeah, obviously historic game, you know, for UMBC. Uh, unbelievable. So proud of these kids. You know, I take so much joy in in watching them smile and and not just at the end there, but throughout the game. You know, I think it's pretty easy to tell everybody in the arena that these guys have passion. Uh, these guys love to play this game. This game means a lot to them. And uh, you know, it was just a special, special effort. Um, you know, particularly the game, um, I thought our defense, you know, in the first half really helped us out, um, you know, to go in 21 to 21 at halftime, you know, after not really shooting it particularly well. Um, you know, obviously Virginia has a lot to do with that. Um, you know, it was tremendous. It gave our guys, you know, some, some life there. Uh, they felt like they could play you know, with them. And then the second half, you know, we continued to get stops. And then all of a sudden we began to run, you know, much better than we did in the first half. And our spacing was tremendous. And we were able to get some, some shots off in transition uh, that would not normally happen uh, had we not been able to, to get a stop. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, these, these guys right here, and I would include Arkell was tremendous. Jordan was tremendous. Um, you know, throughout the game, our big guys came in and, and, and did what they typically do and uh, defended, you know, really well and rebounded. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm so happy for the three seniors. Obviously, Joe, Joe's a, a getting ready to be a graduate here soon, too, so I almost can call him. He's getting ready to be a senior. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing I would say is, you know, Virginia, um, an amazing year. Um, coach Bennett, amazing coach. Uh, their staff, unbelievable. Um, you know, I love Orlando Vandross like he's my brother. And, uh, you know, obviously you could see the pain, uh, you know, after the game, uh, once it settled in there. Uh, you know, you feel for him. And, uh, but certainly doesn't take away the happiness that I have for, for these guys right here. These guys have worked extremely hard you know, to earn a moment like this. And to have two back-to-back -back moments, you know, the America East Championship uh, with our backs against the wall, down nine, to come back and, and win that game. And then, you know, just to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number one team in the country, I mean, unbelievable is really all you could say. Okay, questions, raise your hand. Let's get the hand held. Mike, to let's know who you are, who you're with, and we're gonna take questions just for the student athletes right now. First question, second row, aisle. Jairus, uh, Doug Daddy from the Roanoke Times. Uh, we were having discussion before. Are your parents UVA graduates? Yes. If Lester Lyles, is that correct? Yeah, Lester Lyles and um, Carol Motley. Was that, so will that be any subject of conversation in your family? <laughs> uh, I think they wanted us to get the win, most importantly, but uh, it probably will be a topic of discussion for a little while. <laughs> sure, right? Players, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Coach mentioned being tied at halftime is giving you kind of some confidence. Was there a moment for each of you where you felt like, hey, this was going to be your night? KJ. Um, uh, we started getting stops uh, on a constant uh, at the first half, and that gave us the confidence to get going on offense. Uh, the first half uh, was like a low scoring game, but uh, we knew that we was getting the shots we wanted. We just wasn't making it the first half. but. Um, the second half, we shot the ball with more, more confidence, and that gave us a win. Joe? Um, I think at halftime, when we were tied at 21, and we hadn't shot particularly well, we made some silly turnovers. I think we really felt there's no way we're not going to win this game. All we have to do is start hitting shots. Jairus? 
Um, I think we had the confidence coming into the game. I don't think it was any point in, in the game that we thought we could play with them. We knew we could play with them before the game. Um, but it, tied, tying up with them at halftime definitely gave us more confidence. Um, and we, like Joe just said, and like KJ said, we didn't hit a lot, of, a lot of shots. We had a lot of turnovers, me, myself included. Um, so we definitely went in the second half with a lot of confidence. Second row aisle. Along with the Washington Post, I saw you checking your phone on the way, and are you already starting to get texts from friends about this? And the second part of the question is, can you just put into perspective the, the magnitude of this upset? Uh, number 16 seats have been 0 and 135 in the history of the NCAA tournament. Uh, well, of course, we just made history uh, tonight, and it's, it's always exciting to make history. I don't think it's really sunk in yet for us, but uh, it's, it's, it's a very exciting moment for us, and, and UMBC especially. Back of the room on the right. This, this question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. This question is for Jarius. Uh, Brendan Marks, the Baltimore Sun. It seemed like at some point in the second half you couldn't miss. You had that running one-handed three-pointer. When did you realize that this was a night and you just sort of had to take over? Uh, well, they did a really good job with me in the first half, um, but I just had to be patient, slow down, um, read, the, read the plays better, and I did that in the second half, and uh, my, my shot was falling. So credit to my teammates for finding me. Front row to our left. Uh, questions for Jarris, Zach McCord with the Retriever Weekly. I know that you came back to UMBC with the goal to win an America East title. Could you have ever envisioned yourself in the position you are right now when you came back? Uh, well, these are definitely moments you dream of. Um, we didn't know what seed we would be if, when we won the um, America East Championship, but um, we knew once we saw that 16 seed that we, we had a chance to make history. So it's a very surreal moment. Um, we're very excited. Standing right on the wall. Jarius, Adam Smith with the Times News in Burlington. You and Jordan were there in the final seconds dribbling out the clock. Just what was that like as you looked around and saw all of this finishing? Uh, well, I just want to give credit to our fans. Um, they traveled a long way to come down here and support us. Uh, they were in the game the whole time. And it, it, it really helped us throughout the game. So credit to them. But we were just having a moment saying we did it. Um, we knew we could do it. So it was, it was a special moment we shared right there. Far left, second row. Hi, Gabe Fernandez, Sporting News. Uh, this question is for KJ. Uh, right. Uh, just for a point of uh, clarification, is uh, was that your family holding the large head of you and the, the Puerto Rican flag <laughs> as well? Uh, yes, that's my family. Uh, they've been watching the last couple of games, especially the, the championship game of the America East. Okay, so my, so my question for you on that is, I guess, uh, how much significance does the Puerto Rican flag, your Puerto Rican heritage, and the family being here for this tournament run mean to you, not just in this win, but in all you've accomplished in your uh, career so far? Uh, yeah, I carry them. I carry Puerto Rico in my heart. Uh, I think uh, it's a very special moment for them right now. I'll be making history as a team, but I'm also making history for my country. I think uh, I play for them, uh, especially after what happened with the hurricane and all that stuff. Uh, we've been hurting lately, so these moments give them a little bit of life to my country, and I'm very, I'm very proud and happy for that. All right. For any of the players or all of you, um, to beat the number one team overall seed, I know you said it hasn't totally sunk in yet, but uh, does that change or alter maybe your outlook of what you can get done in this tournament? Joe. I don't think so. We go into every game thinking we're going to win. We have a chance to win. So um, Kansas State won, right? They're going to be a really, really good team, too. So we have a, another big challenge ahead of us on Sunday. Jairus? Uh Yeah, like Joe said, um, we have a, a big challenge on Sunday. Kansas State is a very good team. Um, but beating the number one team definitely gives us confidence going into that game. But we just got to stay level-headed and focus up, uh, execute the coach's plan, read the scout report, and uh, go from there. Front row to our left. Jamar Smith from the Retriever Weekly. Um, this question is for Joe. You had the first six points in the second half to give the team the lead. What was going through your mind and the team's mind when you knocked down those shots? In the first half, I passed up a couple threes, and that really angered my teammates. So. <laughs> In the second half, I made sure I got some off. And there was one I missed. And then Arkell got the rebound, passed it right back to me. I thought about um, doing an extra pass over to KJ. But I knew everybody was going to yell at me if I didn't shoot that one, too. <laughs> so I just let it go. Back of the room on the right. This is for all three of you guys. Uh, could you sense at any point in the game, like, was there a shift where you could feel like Virginia knew what was, what was going to happen? Did you ever feel like you sort of took the spirit away from them? KJ. Um, I think in the first media timeout, we took a seven-point lead. I think at that moment, we started believing more in ourselves and uh, it gave us confidence to keep uh, getting the shot selection that we needed and make, putting in. Joe? So that's a question. Um, I think we were up six right away early in the second half. 
and uh, seven right away in the second half. <laughs> and we were getting real excited on the bench, but there was still like 16 minutes left in the second half. So I personally was trying to stay really level-headed and you know that they can come right back right away real quick because they're the number one team in the country for a reason. Front row. Callum McFadden, Maryland Sports Access. All three of you guys, you guys realize you just inked your names in college basketball history forever, right? Jarius. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, we were talking about it for the game, just trying to go out here and make history, um, doing it for our program, our teammates, our coaching staff. Uh, we just wanted to make history today. Joe? Um, yeah, I think we kind of all wanted to be in the one shining moment video. We were all in the locker room, we're all singing the first line because that's all we know. But I think we're going to have to learn the rest of the song too. KJ? Um, we haven't seen anything actually yet. I'm still kind of with an undescribable feeling. So uh, maybe you'll sink in when I get back to the locker room. Okay, thanks guys. Congratulations. You can head out to the Thank locker room. You. Thank you. Good job, guys. The UMBC locker room will be open until 1215. We'll now take questions for Coach Odom. First question to our far left, second row. Hi, Coach. Uh, yesterday, the players described going up against KJ in practice as uh, very annoying. Uh, clearly, his defensive style is good enough to make him Defensive Player of the Year in the conference. Uh, so what you saw from KJ today, was that same old KJ, or do you think he just went up another level? Uh, during this game, and yeah, what I mean, did you see that? Yeah, showed? to me, I mean, he, it was pretty much same old KJ. I mean, we he he's a pest, and that's what we encourage him to do uh, each and every night. Uh, obviously, he's giving up a ton of size, a ton of weight, um, but his heart is is as big as there is in this country, and uh, he's not afraid of anything and uh, or anyone, and he just he just attacks. And uh, we felt like you know from a pressure standpoint, that was the key to the game for us going in. We had to try to wear them down and pressure their guards, and uh, they're really good at, at, you know, getting under the basket and coming off the of screens. And their big guys are very good at timing when to screen, and that can wear you down. And we felt like we had to wear them down more in the full court, you know, before they got to half court, you know. And, and KJ is a big, a big reason why we were able to do that. Second row. Hey, Ryan. I'm can you put this win in perspective, given your family's history with Virginia? I mean, how does that kind of impact the way you're feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Virginia is a special place. I mean, it's a special place. It was a special time, you know, for the Odom family when we were there. Um, you know, uh, so many high-level people, so many high-character people, so many successful people, and uh, we were just fortunate to be a, a part of it. And, uh, you know, for us to, to be able to beat you know, a, a Virginia basketball team that's had an amazing season. And I know, you know, they, they just lost one of their best players, you know, so that, you know, is a factor as well. Um, you know, I know they probably will not say that, you know, but because that's who they are. But, uh, you know, Hunter is a, a big, big player for them. And, uh, but, you know, take, take nothing away from our guys. Our guys just, just battled, you know, throughout. All right. Ryan, you've expressed kind of your respect for Coach Bennett. I'm curious. If you'd share, what did he say to you after the game? Yeah, I mean, he just said congratulations. He said you guys did an unbelievable job. You know, that was pretty much pretty much it. And <laughs> Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer, kind of the mirror image of that earlier question. But given your many connections to Charlotte, was it special to do that here? Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly, uh, you know, my family and I, we had an unbelievable experience here in Charlotte. We've got so many friends and family here, uh, not just at the university, obviously, at UNC Charlotte, but um, just in general. You know, my brother still lives here. My parents live in Winston-Salem. You know, I've got my two best high school friends, you know, live here. Um, you know, so absolutely, it's, it's special to win here for sure. On the left side, towards the back. Coach, against the best defensive team in the country, talk to us about how your basketball team was able to shoot 19 for 28 from the floor, almost 68%, and score 53 points against the best defensive team in America. I think it starts with our defense. You know, we were able to get stops. And when we're able to get stops, our guys are able to run and push the ball. And KJ and Jarris are very, very good in transition. And we're hard to match up with, you know, when the guys are they're sprinting it up the court. And I mean, he's a little wizard with the ball, and he's finding guys. 
and you know our guys are in sync you know right now they know where each other are going to be on the court and we knew going into the game you know a big key was going to be the three point line you know for us we had to dominate that that stat right there in order to even have a chance and you know certainly that that proved to be true our defense while we while the shots were great our defense was magnificent right middle of the room Michael Chris for Observer News Enterprise. Uh, Coach, you've had some stints at uh, UNC Charlotte. Lenore Ryan, can you just talk about your coaching journey from those stints and how it kind of helped you prepare? Yeah, I mean, certainly it's a blessing. You know, um, you know, my time at Charlotte was was tremendous. We we had, you know, great family type atmosphere that you know was created there. I mean, Judy's right here and Ken, just great people. And uh, you know, it, it started with with them, and. Uh, you know, Alan obviously got, got sick in the middle of that year, and that was our main concern was his health. And that certainly helped me, uh, you know, the confidence that Alan had in me, the, the confidence that Judy had in me to, you know, finish the year there was, you know, was tremendous, and it gave me on-the-job training. And, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Neil McGahee because he's, you know, passed away this year. Um, you know, he took a shot on me at, at Lenore Ryan. And the kids that I coach there, I've talked about it at nauseum to my guys at, at uh, UMBC. You know, I had some of them in the stands tonight from LR. Uh, quite a few, you know, people came to support. And, uh, you know, that, that season was magical. I mean, it really was. The, the, the amount of passion that those kids had, you know, for the game was un unbelievable. And then, you know, to get the opportunity at UMBC, Tim Hall, you know, who's here, you know, gave me an opportunity there or here. And, uh, you know, these kids have been equally unbelievable. And, you know, from day one, they've just bought in and, uh, you know, they believe in themselves. You know, we've had our, we've taken our lumps, but at the same time, we've just, you know, we, we've persevered and, and we have a very resilient group. Last question, front left. Jamo Smith, Retriever Weekly. Coach, I wanted to know, when Jarius Lyles in the first half had five points and then in the second half scored over 20-plus, when he gets on a roll like that, like he did in the second half, do you just let him play or, like, or do you call any plays? I always let him, play. let him play. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never try to hold him back at all. I, with, with Jarius, it's all about just reading the plays. You know, he's got an amazing nose to score the ball. I mean, he's unbelievable. Um, but, you know, his teammates have so much confidence in him. And when he gets going like that, it breeds confidence into the other guys. And I think you saw that tonight. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks. Reminder, the UMBC locker room is open until 1215. The Virginia locker room is currently open, be open until 1222. Well, first, um, hats off to, to Coach Odom and his staff in UMBC. They, 
They played a terrific game. They thoroughly outplayed us. And um, they did a heck of a job. Very hard to guard offensively. And they defended us well. I was concerned with a four guard or a four perimeter offense heading into this. Um, and we didn't do the job. And I told these guys in the locker room, you know, a week ago, we were cutting down the nets at the ACC tournament and how good that felt. Um, and they had a historic season. They really did. Uh, I said that to Tracy um, the CBS after the game in terms of ACC wins and um, an ACC conference tournament championship. And then we had a historic loss, being the first one seed to lose. So um, that's life. We talk about it all the time uh, with the adulation, the praise. It comes, and we've got a lot of that this year. And then on the other side, there'll be blame and, and people pointing that out. But that can't, uh, in the end, you know, define these guys and our team or us, because it was a remarkable season. But, but we got thoroughly outplayed, and that's the reality of it. And um, I hate for this team, the way they played, to, to lose like this. But for Devin and Isaiah to go out like that, and Nigel being a, a fifth year for us. So um, with that. Um, if you play this game and you step into the arena, this stuff can happen. And those who haven't been in the arena or in the competition, maybe they don't understand that. But there's chances for wonderful things to happen. But when you're in the arena, stuff like this can happen. And all those who compete take that on. And, and so we'll accept it. And again, I want to congratulate the job that Ryan and his staff did. It They, they played well, and, and we did not. Questions for? Um Kyle and Ty, raise your hand. First question to our right. Uh, for both of you guys, what was UMBC doing so effectively, really at both ends of the floor, and then especially at the start of the second half? Ty. Um, they spread the floor. They made shots. We didn't. And I don't think we defended well. Um, we didn't pass the ball well. We didn't, you know, bring. We didn't come off screens well. We didn't. We didn't do anything well tonight, to be honest. Um, and give credit to them too, because they play well. They're a good team, but we didn't we didn't do anything well. Yeah, that defense. Mm -hmm. Defensively, they uh, they were very quick, and you know we're beating screens and short cutting and stuff. So it was just hard to get in a rhythm. And then once we got down eight or ten, we were trying to make home run plays because you know you don't you don't want to be in this position and so. Questions for Kyle or Ty? To our left. Roger Rubin from the Fieldhouse for Ty. You know, you've listed a bunch of things that sort of were happening about why you guys didn't, about how you guys didn't play that well. Do you have any idea why it happens that way? Um, you know, it's basketball. Um, you're not going to be, I mean, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I guess we didn't maybe we didn't come ready to play today. Um, we didn't shoot well. That that definitely doesn't help. But to only have five total assists as a team is pretty bad. So I guess we didn't move the ball well. We didn't shoot well. We probably should have thrown into the post more. I don't have the answers. Andy, to our right. For both you guys, obviously, it's a tough spot to come in here and, and answer questions. I'm curious, what have you learned from Coach Bennett that prepares you for this part of basketball? Kyle. Um, you know, I love Coach Bennett, but there's not really a whole lot that can prepare you for this kind of feeling. Um, uh, he, uh, you know, has instilled a lot of uh, humility and unity throughout our team, so, you know, It'll be easy, easy for us to bounce back, but you know, there's not really uh, an answer to, to make you feel better in this uh, situation. Um, back of the room. Brendan, Brendan Marks, the Baltimore Sun. This question is for either one of you. Um, what did you guys talk about at halftime being tied 21-21? What did you think you needed to do in, in the second half to sort of swing things back in your favor? Ty. Um, it's tough to remember, but I think we just said uh, uh, every possession was going to matter. Um, I think it was 21-21. Uh, 
and they had a three off an offensive rebound and a three when we didn't scramble correctly and make a right rotation. So that's six of their 21 points. So we said every possession is going to matter. Um, we were going to be in for a battle, and uh, we had to buckle down, um, especially defensively and um, offensively, just you know, be more aggressive, want to spread the floor a little more. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't do either one of those things. Joe Wright. Kyle, uh, Lyles had taken only two shots in the first half, I believe, scored five points, and then gets 23 after intermission. What did they do differently, and what made it so difficult to check him after halftime? Um, he was a you know tough player to guard. He was very shifty and could hit tough shots. And um, in the first half, honestly, he just wasn't really being all that aggressive. Uh, and you know Devin was playing uh, pretty good defense, and um, but other guys were hitting shots, so he didn't really need to do much. And then second half, he got it going, and you know, Coach Williford said when you let a team hang around for a while, they get a lot of confidence, and you know he definitely had that. Second row, Howdy from the run-up times. Ty, uh, were you aware that a, a 16 had never won before, and did you just kind of dismiss that ahead of time? Um, I think everyone's aware of that. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up again. But uh, yeah, I was aware of it. Any other questions? Last question for the student athletes. What kind of life lesson does this teach both of you? Um, I mean, if you're worried about you know the outside world, Coach Bennett and the staff told us. Earlier in the year, that um, you know, it's a flip of a coin. It's that the same people that will tell you how great you are and praise you, um, you know, when you're on top. You feel like you're on top of the world. Well, are the same people that are going to kill you, you know, when you're when you're at this point. Um, but to be honest, I don't think we. This team's never been worried about you know you guys, the media, the outside world. But it just shows you that really anybody could be anybody, and if you don't come to play, you're going to get beat. I mean, it's basketball. I, uh, you know, it's you know it's all a blur right now. It's really hard to <laughs> to answer these questions, as you guys know. And um, one thing this this team was really good at and built on was resiliency. And I think bouncing back from something that's so heartbreaking um, will be will be a huge key for us. I just you know just feel so bad for Isaiah and Devin and, and Nigel because it's not how we wanted to send them out. Okay, guys, thank you. You can head back to the locker room. We appreciate you being here, and congratulations on a great year. Okay, questions for Coach Bennett. First question, the back of the room to our right. Coach, I, I know it's got to be difficult for you to, to tell these guys really anything to sort of comfort them now, but you know, in the locker room post game, what, what do you try and tell them? Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can say uh, right now. Um, we talked about a few things, but, um, you know, heads are down. And again, that's the reality of it. And you can say all the, the, the soothing things or whatever. And I, time, time will heal. And I did share with them. I said uh, what I started my opening statement with, that's, that's life. Um, this is not the end of the world. Okay, this is not a, there's a lot of worse things that can happen. It's the first time it happened, but this is a possibility. And we knew that. Um, again, I, we, we had a, a remarkable year. And, but we also knew our margin for error wasn't huge, and they just played. They were so good. And I was so sad that now we're done with this group because they did everything I asked. And when we weren't quite right, we couldn't keep them out of the paint. You asked that question, whoever did, about Lyles coming off the ball screen. 33 or 13 are both foremen who can really shoot. And so I think at times we were worried about, we got to get back to the shooter, and then we didn't stop the ball, and they had us in no man's land, and uh, they put pressure on us in ways they did. But, um, but back to the, the deal, there, there's not much you can say. Um, I think they're strong character guys, and... and have to bounce back. Like he said, resiliency has been their strength. And now it'll get tested in a way that I don't think they thought it would have to be tested. Second row. 
you mentioned earlier in the week that you'd seen Lyles at your camp, uh, son of uh, UVA alumni. What's mom, yeah. What did you remember? I, not much. I mean, he, he's really quick. He's really good. I, he went to VCU, obviously, and had a terrific, I think he came back for his fifth year. I wish he wouldn't have done that now. <laughs> so, um, but really good. What a heck of a senior year or, or fifth year and um, dangerous. You saw the shot he hit to get them into the NCAA tournament. And again, the way they play with the four guards and the spread and uh, the quickness. And that's, uh, their point guard did a heck of a job. Uh, KJ was, I mean, he was so quick and he managed the game and they really defend it. So uh, that quickness with a four separate ball screen has always been an issue uh, if you can't switch it. And, and they put us in a tough spot and we didn't do a great job with it. All the way in the back of the room. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Lawrence, Seven City Shop Talk Sports. Uh, you alluded to, the, er, alluded to it earlier about uh, them being uniquely gifted with the four guards uh, system. Yeah. Uh, is there a, another team that you've seen in the last two years that uh, kind of reminds you of them? Because I, I mean, they're very, you know, very yeah. different from what I've seen. Yeah, another, uh, we, we've at times had a little trouble with four perimeter teams, four guard teams. And, um, and this is not an excuse, but, you know, without DeAndre, I thought we had enough with what we had, but that allowed us to sometimes switch and he could, you know, his versatility helped us. When we didn't have that, we always were a little nervous. Um, and so I think, again, their quickness, their size is small and we, we couldn't, a couple times we got it inside, we couldn't take enough advantage of that. They did a great job blocking out. But um, again, they put a lot of pressure on you with that. And they run their offense. That's why I wanted to give credit to Ryan. They run their offense so fast. That ball just pop, pop, pop. And they got dribble handoffs. They're keeping it and they're moving. And if you're not really disciplined and really sound, and we worked as hard as we could preparing for it, um, but it's like you can't mimic that until you go against it. And they, they got us a little behind. And then we lost our way. We, we like I think it was a good point. We probably tried to get it back in one shot and got out of character. and. Uh, I'm sure I'll look at the tape, and and uh, I probably made a lot of poor adjustments, uh, and that's that's part of it. And I'll I'll grow from it as a coach. Um, but our young men tried; they they battled. It wasn't a lack of effort, but it was a hard team for us once they got ahead of us. Reminder: Virginia locker room open for another four minutes. Any other questions for Coach Bennett? To our left, C.L. Brown with the Fieldhouse, Tony. Uh, in the steps you've taken to build this program, how, how will you view this season, given that, as you said, you guys achieved a lot getting yeah. number one, winning ACC regular season, but to have it in this way? Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't know. Um, <laughs> remarkable 31 wins. I think this team maxed out as much as any team that I've had, and we were so healthy and so good up until this last game, so we needed all hands on deck. Um, You'll remember this, it'll sting. Maybe a one seed will get beat again, maybe not. Maybe we'll be the only one seed to ever lose. It's life, it goes on. So I, we'll have to get past that for some reason. Um, this is what we've got to deal with. And my job now will be to say, hey, how do we bounce back with our, our players and all that? But, but a life lesson is sitting there about defining yourself by maybe not what the world says, but there's other things that matter, and then you get back to it. Um, phenomenal year. Can't take away an ACC championship. Can't take away the most wins. Can't take away an ACC conference tournament. And you can't take away, so far, being the first one seed to get beat and lose. I grew up, played at Wisconsin Green Bay, the hyphenated schools. I know how good they are. I said it yesterday or the day before the press conference. Good basketball knows no divisions or limits or qualities, and, and they played all that matters is who plays the best. They earned their right to play in this tournament. We earned our right. They earned their right to move on, and it's who played the best for those 40 minutes, and they absolutely did. So um, I won't take away from some of the things, but it certainly stings. And um, you know, I don't know. I'll have to th ask me that maybe next year or another time, and we'll see. Any other questions? Thank you. OK, thanks. 